Um, I don't even know what to say after that, honestly. Uh, you guys have just preached a sermon with your prayers and with your life. Uh, that's an amazing thing. Um, I have a few verses that I want to share with you this morning, and, uh, and we'll be dismissed. We'll, we'll go. Uh, in John chapter 6, 26 through 29. John chapter 6, 26 through 29. says, Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we, be do? What must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. I was thinking about uh, today. Uh, me and Greg talked about this uh, several weeks ago, uh, you know, when he knew that the surgery was coming up and he asked me if I'd preach for him. And um, I've been thinking about, you know, it's January 1, 2017, you know, New Year's Day. What do you talk about uh, on January 1, uh, the first you know, typically we talk about setting goals, right? Uh, New Year's resolutions, trying to come up with things we need to do better this year than we did last year. Um, and I'm sure we've already, probably in our minds, we've thought of things, right? Uh, maybe you woke up thinking about something. Maybe last night you went to bed thinking about something. I, I was thinking like the, uh, the typical thing, like, man, I've got to get back in the gym. I need to, you know, get back in shape. I, I need to quit wheezing every time I walk upstairs. You know, I'm, um, my kids can outrun me and this is bad. I need to get faster. Um, you know, we all think about the, the typical things, right? And I started to read this verse. I, I was thinking about what it is that we really need. Uh, you know, we all can do better about being more organized or uh, getting in better shape or taking better care of things or, you know, whatever. Financial independence, I don't know, whatever issue you're, you're struggling with, we can all do those things better, right? But when I read these, this scripture here, and I think about what it is that we are called as a, as a people to do, not as a, not as Americans, not as uh, you know a certain segment, not as Tennesseans. Or is that how you say it? I know Floridians, but I don't know is it Tennesseans or Tennesseeist or something. Um, East Tennesseans, you got to put the East in there and Northeast, right? You got to put it all together. Um, but you know, I don't mean specific to our our culture. I mean specific to us as, as followers of Christ as believers on the name that is above all names, what is it that we should be doing better? What is it that we can work towards? And, and I love that Christ, I, you know, you see here in verse 20, it says, then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Isn't that a question that we all ask from time to time? You know, I look at my life and I see, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, or, you know, we're going to Cincinnati this summer, and this uh, spring we're going to pack bags for homeless uh, people at our student conference, and we're going to do these different things. And I love that Jesus didn't, he didn't come up with some list of things to do, right? He didn't say, you know, you need to feed the, the poor, or you need to take care of this person, or you need to do that or that. He says, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. That is what we have been called to do above everything else, above our, our ability to, to dig wells in Africa or, or send people out or raise money or do anything. We have been called to believe on Jesus Christ in a deeper and a more just fervent way every day. It's not something that we did at one time 
And then it's, uh, you know, we got our, our card punched and then we just move along. Uh, this is something that we've been called to work through every day. This is the work. The works of God. To believe on him who he sent. Because that's why we're here. You know that if we, if we do this, uh, let's say like today, you know, we, we pray for, for Hannah and for the Salyers, and we see miraculous things happen. I, I believe, I mean, I honestly believe God can heal Hannah. I, I believe that, that he can do things today that look just like what he did in the New Testament. Uh, I, I believe that we serve the same God. Let's say that we believe on him and we see things happen and people see a difference in our lives because of the fact that we believe in him. Not just because he does miraculous things, but because our lives are changed. Do you know that your life being changed is a miraculous thing? You've all experienced it. If you know Christ, you have experienced a miracle because he saved you. And I, I can tell you from personal experience, if he saved me, he can save you. It was a miracle of God that he awakened me, that he called me out, that he saved me. I didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up around Christians. I didn't grow up with a, a knowledge of the Bible. He called me out. That is a miracle. And that is what he's saying here. Believe in him whom he has sent. it. And I love where he's coming from with this. It's not talking about, nobody came up and asked him for a list or anything. He says, truly, truly, I say unto you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. I think we often do that. I'll admit to that. A lot of times I, I go to him because I need something, right? I need money or I need uh, something to be fixed or I need this to happen or I need my house to sell and I need this to happen or uh, this certain part of it's bad and I need it to be good. And he's saying, you know, you're not following me because you saw the signs. You're following me because your belly's full. He says, do not labor for the food that perishes. You know, do you think he's just talking about food there? Because I don't. I mean, you got to think about the society and the culture in which he's talking to. Um, they didn't have iPhones and gold chains, and or they probably had gold chains. I don't know. Uh, maybe who knows? But uh, it wasn't quite as materialistic as as we are. But it was the food. You know, it was kind of their their big thing. To have a lot of food meant meant something. And so, for someone to come along and feed you, you, know, you might follow them. And he's saying, you're, you're not coming to me just because you believe in who I am. You're coming to me because I've provided a need for you. And he's saying, do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. It's a very simple thought, and we're not going to stretch it out. We're not going to go too far with this, but it's a very simple thought. We can labor for the things that are gonna last for eternity, or we can labor for the things that will perish. Um, I mean, we can look at, we can just watch television for a few minutes. If you've got a cable TV, you can go in there and you can find about, I think there's four or five different channels that are all about food. Um, I think there's one called Food Network and it's preparing food and uh, how to do this and how to make it the best. And then there's shows about the best thing I ever ate and it's a show of people that are videoing people eating things in other places. And uh, there's the one I like is the Bizarre Foods, uh, the Andrew Zimmer. He goes and eats really weird stuff and I'm always like, I just want to watch that because I'm like, I'm kind of grossed out but I'm kind of intrigued. Um, and so... Uh, He's saying, you know, you can labor after these things that are going to last for eternity, or you can labor after these things that, you know, we all know what happens to food pretty quickly, right? It doesn't last for eternity. Guys, I, I'm, I'm here to encourage you. As the new year comes, as, as we're moving into this 2017, whoever thought 2017 would actually be a thing. Uh, but... As we're moving into this, I, I'm encouraging you, don't 
Lay up for yourselves treasures for here. Don't seek the food that lasts for not very long. Seek the things that last for eternity. Put those treasures up that can't be reached, can't be touched. Guys, I can tell you, uh, my house burned down when I was in eighth grade. Uh, most of the house burned, but my room specifically was gone. Like everything I owned was disappeared. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's why I have a different perspective a little bit, but it, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for you to go to the store and buy a new couch while your house is burning down, would it? Maybe afterwards, you know, you go to the store, you're like, I gotta replace the one, but while it's burning, you're not having it delivered while the house is on fire, right? What would the delivery guys think? Well, they probably wouldn't care. They'd be like, oh, we're getting paid. Who cares? Just hand them this. Um, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. And so often, that's what Jesus is saying. That's what we're doing. We're having our furniture delivered to a burning house. We're, we're buying new stuff to fill up a life that is, is soon to pass. And that's what I want to encourage you with this morning. Not go and do all these certain things. Not go, you need to be feeding the homeless. We do need to do all those things, right? We need to be a church and a body of believers that, that affects a change in our community and in our state and in our world. But guys, don't expect to do big things out there that you're not doing in your life every day. I heard a missionary the other day talking about, he said, the biggest mistake people make when they go on short-term missions trips is, is that they expect that they're going to do things over in Africa that they don't do in their lives every day. Don't seek after those things that are passing away. Seek after the things that last. It's really all that matters. Doing the works of God is believing on Christ. That is what you as a, as a follower of Christ have been called to do, is to believe on him. That's all I want to share with you this morning. Let's pray. Lord, thank you once again Lord, for the ability to gather together. Lord, thank you for being our God, our comfort, our, our peace our reconciler, our justifier, Lord. Lord, our sanctifier. Lord, I pray that as we move forward in this year, Lord, that we would believe on you. Lord, more and more, we would see you for who you are, that you're eternal. Lord, that the things of this world will pass away so fast. And Lord, that they never satisfy. And you, you will satisfy. Lord, I thank you for the ability to stand up here and, and proclaim this. And Lord, I pray that in my own life, Lord, I, I would practice this. That's in your name I pray. Amen. Um, I'll give you an opportunity this morning. Um, uh, we've come down, we've prayed specifically for the Sawyers, and uh, you know, we'll give you an opportunity to come down to the altar if you want to pray for them again, if you want to pray more for them. Uh, you know, that's great. Uh, but if there's something that, that's going on in your life, if there's something that you feel like you need to come down and bring to the altar and leave at the altar uh, as we go into this new year. I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to take time to pray. Uh, just take time to, to meet with him. So as uh, Sheila plays and David sings, we're going to take time to do that.